Hey guys, it's Cameron here with Emerson House Buyers. Every week I bring you tools, tactics, strategies, lessons I've learned, things that have helped me build up a sizable run portfolio in about two years. Today I want to talk about the this index card book rules. So uh, this individual, I can't even remember the author's name off the cuff here, but I heard about this the other day. I listened to him on a podcast, and I don't even remember what it was. I think it was Freakonomics. I think it was Freakonomics Radio. They were doing a little finance uh, finance series, great podcast. If you guys don't listen to it, very interesting. Um, but they have this in co index card book rules. So this guy, this finance professor, um, created these rules, and he said these. He just wrote them on an index card, and you can Google it and find it. But he wrote them on there and saying, um, if you do this, these very simple, very basic rules, um, you will be financially well off, right? Um, if you don't. You might, you know, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. You might end up okay, but you're going to be fighting up an, up an uphill battle. So what are these rules? There's 10 of them. They're fairly simple, so I want to run through them pretty quickly. Strive to save 10 to 15% of your income. Now, he mentions in here it will be difficult for some income brackets to be able to do this, but if you can, over the long term, if you just always take 10 to 20% off the top and put that away and invest it, you're going to be, you're going to be great. Pay credit card balances in full every month. This is something the country really, really, really struggles with. Uh, we have over a trillion dollars. Actually, I think student loans just overtook um, credit cards, but credit cards used to be the largest debt in the country. Now it's student loans at one over 1.6 trillion. Um, the, you know, they're saying if you pay it off, you know, credit cards are between 15 and 30 percent. So if you pay that off every month, you're saving yourself 15 to 30 percent on your money. There's very little investments outside of real estate, that uh, that gets you that kind of return. Uh, and one of, other of his tips was ignore, ignore, ignore the credit card um, rewards and blah, blah, blah programs because what they do is they just get you hooked in the, into the credit card program and then you're stuck using it and then you get in debt and then you're paying 15 to 30%, right? So those are kind of bait tactics. They get you, they, they put that little line out there and then you bite and then they... You start swiping that thing, boom, 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 and next thing you know, you're a credit card debt. Number three, max out your 401k and other tax, tax advantage savings accounts. Again, the tax code favors these investments. Make them. Do not fight, whether you agree with the government or not, and whether you agree with the tax deductions or not, play by the rules, guys. I mean, you know, I don't agree with everything that, that uh, is set up in the government either. But I'm not going to fight them. I'm going to play by their rules. I'm going to beat them at their own game, right? And there's huge advantages for your 401k, your IRA, HSA, um, SEPA IRA. It's government calling. That's the IRS. See what happened? Start talking about the IRS and, they, uh, and the government and they give us a buzz. Okay, uh, yeah, HSA. 401k, IRAs, SEP IRA and 401ks if you're um, self-employed. All those uh, retirement accounts are tax advantage and they're fantastic. Number four, never buy or sell individual stocks. Guys, we've talked about this a hundred times. I mentioned it before. Diversification, individual stocks are losers. Um, you cannot pick them. You have the recency bias to buy what's doing well or done well recently. I mean, I can go on and on and on about reasons why not to buy individual stocks. Don't do it. Number five, this leads us into number five. Buy inexpensive, well-diversified index funds and ETFs. So he's got a little quote in here from Jack Bogle. You want to capitalize on the magic of compound returns without succumbing to the tyranny of compounding costs. So it's a brilliant quote by Jack Bogle. He's a founder of Vanguard. He's actually invented index funds because way back when he said, holy Moses, None of these mutual funds with all these high fees or are outperforming the index because of all the high fees. So you guys have seen, I mentioned it in other videos, check it out up here or here. Um, compound interest, you go, you, you build, you have a slow build, and then towards the end, it's just an un, a ridiculous uh, tail. Now, that also happens with cost. So 1% slowly erodes your portfolio and increases like that as well. Um, 2%, the average on mutual funds and actively managed funds is about 3%. That 
um, is extremely inhibiting to your portfolio. If you don't believe me, check out one of my other videos here. Um, you'll see that. Number six, make your financial advisor commit to the fiduciary standard. Now, um, again, we've mentioned this before in the past. The fiduciary standard is the gold standard. They have to act in your best interest. They cannot sell you into high-cost uh, funds, um, things that pay them commissions. If they do that, um, as a fiduciary, they're breaking the law, but... If you go into any other broker, they can do that. They can legally sell you into things that pay them a higher commission that aren't beneficial for you. I like the analogy. It's like going to a barber to ask him if you need a haircut. They're going to say yes, right? They're going to charge you. Um, they did a, a research uh, research group at Harvard, sent actors out uh, to financial advisors, and they stated in this, this is what this guy was saying, some had crazy portfolios, and some had essentially perfect portfolios of low-cost funds. So they had a huge range. You had some of the advisors who just created stupid portfolios, and some of them actually did create low-cost index funds. Um, the ones that had excellent investments uh, were advised to move into more expensive investments. So if they came in, these actors, and brought um, the uh, financial advisor their, their portfolio, and it was composed of low-cost index funds, the advisor, this says the majority of the time, unfortunately, would move them into higher-cost funds, which would then in turn pay the advisor a, uh, a fee, a higher commission, right? So be cognizant of that. And I mentioned that in another video up here. here. Uh, check that out. Um, number seven, buy a home when you're financially ready. Um, most leveraged and undiversified investment you'll make. That is true. He says, be sensible, put 20% down, a 30-year 30, 30 fixed interest rate, especially now that interest rates are, are low and been low for several years, starting to climb, but still uh, historically low. And buy a home you can afford with reserves. Guys, we've mentioned this before. I mentioned it in one of my other videos. Check it out up here. Um, that it's not just, you know, when you buy a house, it's not just that monthly payment. You have to think about maintenance, repairs, HOA dues, taxes going up. All that you have to be cognizant of because if you're not and you get in there and you're like, oh my gosh, well, oh, I've got utilities. I've got, you know, the AC breaks. Um, you've got to do some improvements. Things happen. That's how people lose their house. They, they go in there and they see, okay, well, my principal and interest payment is going to be well, principal interest, taxes, insurance, PITI is what they call it, is going to be $1,500 a month. I can afford that. Well, they didn't think about adding the extra $200 for you know, utilities, $300 for um, maintenance and repairs, cutting the yard, painting every now and then, you know, fertilizing the yard, doing a little landscaping, all that stuff. I mean, there, there are things that have to be done. Replace an AC unit every about 10 to 15 years, sometimes in less time. Um, you know, you have a foundation that needs to be, um, you know, watched uh, carefully. And you got a roof that will go out every so many years. Maybe if you have, in a, live in an area of high winds or, or storms, you know, that could happen more frequently. Um, number eight. Only two more after this, boys and girls. Insurance. Ensure you're protected. So, um, I am not an insurance guru, but I will tell you this. High deductible plans where if you're healthy... High deductible plans are a great thing to use because they cost the least amount. So if you're healthy, if you work out, if you exercise, you eat right, and you're not you're not in, on any prescriptions or or have any any health issues, get a high deductible plan. It'll cost you the bare minimum. But what he's saying is, hey, you've got to have some insurance, especially if you have kids or young kids. Um, if you die, um, what's the wife going to do, or what are your kids going to do? I mean, if you're the breadwinner. You're, in, you're up shit creek. I mean, there's big trouble right there, you know. So you get a policy, um, get some insurance, get some health insurance. You know, the leading cause, the leading cause in the United States is what? Oh, excuse me, the leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States is what? Anybody want to take a guess? That's right. That's right. Medical. Absolutely. So do not fall victim to that and... Um, and become bankrupt due to breaking your leg or getting into a car accident because you're uninsured. Don't do that. 
But that honestly is the leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States is, is medical, which is, is very sad. Number nine, support the social.